Hey you guys. Okay, I think I'm live. I was having some technical difficulties, so I'm gonna wait a minute to see if anybody hops on. Okay, perfect. Now I can see some people hopping on. Hello. I wasn't seeing it do anything before, so I just went ahead and canceled it. So all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and start. Hopefully this is recording. I'm actually at a wedding today, and so it's in the middle of nowhere, so I'm praying you guys can hear me okay. It says that I'm live, and it says the connection's okay, so um, if you can just maybe give me some thumbs up or some hearts, that would be awesome. Um, but my name's Crystal Pearl. I'll just go ahead and kind of introduce myself while we're kind of waiting for some people to get on and share a little bit about my story with you guys. Um, so I have been a part of It Works for um, just a little over six years. Um, I joined this business. I used to be a hairstylist. Hey, Janessa! Okay, now I can see people hopping on. Good. So I, um, when I was introduced to this product, um, I was a hairstylist, and I had a client who came into the salon and gave me a Blitz card. And I remember looking at that card and thinking, no way. There's absolutely no way this product works. If it did, I would know about it for, by now for sure. But I was also really intrigued because I was dealing with a lot of loose skin. I just had twins. They were six months old at the time. And I thought, you know, what the heck? I'm going to try it. I'm going to see what happens. See um, if it works or, you know, kind of prove it wrong, whatever it may be. And I tried a wrap. And I had unbelievable results. My skin was tighter. My stretch marks were faded. Um, and I instantly fell in love with this product and I thought, Oh my gosh, I need to tell people about this. I knew my clients would like it. They would want to try it. Um, but really, I mean, in all reality, I, when I looked at that, I could either be a loyal customer and get the product at wholesale, or I could get the product at wholesale and make some money. For me, it was kind of a no brainer. I've always been one of those people. If I can make an extra money doing anything, I'm like, Hey, heck yeah, let's try it. You know, I'm the girl that goes to the mall and somebody's like, Hey, will you do a survey for $10? And I'm like, heck yeah, I'll do a survey for $10. Um, so try to um so I decided to sign up as a distributor. Um and what I want you guys to know is I signed up to do this business being extremely shy, like so shy. Hey Kristen. Um so shy. The idea of this would never happen. But I just people like in high school, they thought that I was just like like rude and stuck up because I just didn't talk because I was so extremely shy. So super shy. Um, we were in so much debt. We had gone into major debt when I was on bed rest with my daughters, um, and not able to work. And my husband got laid off and I don't know if some of you know my story, but that's kind of what happened with us. So we were in a lot of debt. I didn't have a lot of friends. Um, I had never done anything like this in my life, but I just, again, saw the opportunity that I could make some extra income, and I thought, what the heck, why not? And so um, I just started sharing with people about this awesome product. Um, I just, I pushed myself out of my comfort zone, and that's what I'm going to kind of share with you guys today is a little bit about how I did that with being so shy, um, never have done any. I had never done anything like this, you know, not having a lot of friends. I'm going to kind of share with you how I got through that. Um, and also a big obstacle for me was my husband was not on board with this at all. He actually was my biggest critic up until I was presidential diamond. He wanted nothing to do with it, did not believe in it, but that's a whole, that's a whole different, um, story. So I'll talk about that on the next time I'm on, but what I wanted to talk to you guys today is about building your confidence because I know for me that was something that was really huge because I did not have any confidence in myself when I started this business and in all honesty for me somebody believed in me before I believed in myself and that was huge for me is that they believed I could do it so I kind of just um, use their belief until I got there. But sometimes people, they say, okay, they believe in me. They believe in me. I'm going to borrow their belief. But how do you build belief? And that's what I kind of wanted to share with you guys about. So for me, building belief came from, um, believing in the product. So if you are not using the product, somebody, I think it was Kim touched in said, um, 
you know, if the products aren't changing your life, the business probably isn't either. And that's so, so true. So I started using the products. Everything and anything that I could use, I used. I wanted to build a testimony. I wanted to see what it did. Um, I asked my customers for testimony. So I started believing in the product. That was pretty easy for me because I had amazing results right off the bat with the wrap. Um, and then, you know, I started using the greens, fell in love with the greens, the defining gel. I mean, everything. I, I used everything. So product was easy. Um, the next thing you need is you need belief in the company and in network marketing in general. You need to believe that this can work and that it can work for you. So I started reading books. Um, Beach Money was a big one. I read GoPro. Um, there's so many really great books out there on network marketing, but I had to, I had to believe in network marketing. That was huge for me. So believing in network marketing and then believing in the company and to believe in the company, you have to get to events. You have to see what this company is all about. And I know for some of you, we have so many different levels of people on here. We have people that are um, higher ranks and then we have people that are just kind of getting started. If you haven't been to an event yet, you have to get to an event because what happens is you, you know, you believe in it works, you believe in the company, you believe in Mark Pentecost, but I will tell you when you see it, uh, in front of you and you see the vision that Mark has for this company and the vision of it works and where it's going for me once once I saw this company was real that it had a vision my belief in the company was through the roof so I had no fear um, telling people about this company because I believed in it with all of my heart and soul and then you need to start believing in yourself and for me that was the biggest thing you need to start growing your mind so um you know there's so many different things that you can do with growing your mind you know there's a lot of personal development things you can do make sure you're taking time for yourself every single day to grow your mind but also for me i want to talk about confidence because that's something that when i started to become confident um everything changed for me. So one thing that I started doing a lot early on, and I still do it all the time, is I practice and I visualize. And for some people, this might sound silly. Like I always laugh. I tell my team, you know, you might see me driving down the road talking to myself because I do, I practice all the time. I go through different scenarios in my head. And the reason is, is because I like working my way through it. So like on the way to a party, um, I'll walk through what that party is going to look like. I'll visualize it. I'll, I'll say, I, you know, I'll visualize talking to the hostess. I'll visualize, um, somebody there being a skeptic. I'll visualize someone there being a potential distributor, customers. And I walk through the scenario in my head. I literally will, um, walk through the party pad. I'll say exactly what I'm going to say. And that's something that started to build my confidence because the more I practiced it, you know, or even, you know, you can sit down in front of a mirror and it sounds really crazy. And I know it sounds weird and it's going to feel weird the first time you do it, but sit down in front of a mirror and take out your party pad and start going through your party pad. Just practice saying it because the party pad is such a, an important tool in our business and it's because it's replicatable or duplicatable um, you know somebody can watch you doing the party pad and just pointing and walking through it and they can say well I can do that if she can do that I can do that which is so true so keep it simple but practice it so as you're going through it you feel confident with what you're gonna say and um, it's something that I think is important and I've just I really started noticing it um, this past year, I've, I went to a couple one team, one missions, and um, I just, I saw some people that were higher ranks and they were really struggling to get through that party pad. They, you know, I don't know, it, it, some of that's nerves, of course, but I just think, you know, if we go through and we become really confident with our presentation, still keeping it simple, pointing, reading the words, but feeling confident in it, that's going to change a lot for you because you're going to be able to bring more of your passion out. You're going to be able to bring more of your excitement out. Um, and people are just more attracted to somebody who's confident. And so that's something that I do a lot as I practice. I go through different scenarios all the time, and that's really helped me with my confidence. So that's something that I really, really encourage you guys to do 
And then the other thing that I wanted to talk about, um, and I know it's Saturday, so I didn't want to make this one super long because I know it's a busy day and it's the last day of BOGO wrap, so everybody's out, you know, getting those last few customers in, which is so exciting. But um, I wanted to talk to you guys about networking and growing your network because this is something that um, I really struggled with in the beginning because when I joined six years ago, um, you know, it's funny because people say to me, will say to me all the time, you know, you joined six years ago, no wonder you're successful. You know, nobody knew about it then. And to be completely honest with you guys, nobody knew about it, but it made it harder because they literally thought this was like crazy. Like they did not believe it. They had never heard of it where now people are kind of starting to hear about it. So I think it's so much easier because we're more credible. People have heard of it works. They've maybe heard of some people that have had um, results or whatever it may be. But when I started, all of my friends, all of my families, nobody wanted anything to do with it. They thought it was completely crazy. And so I had to really learn how to grow my network because I didn't have that warm market support. You know, I had a few people here and there, but I didn't have a lot of warm market support. And so one thing that I started doing to grow my network is I grew a lot on social media. I did a lot of my business on social media. And so one thing that I do, and I still do this all the time, is I'll go through my friends list. And I'll go through friends that I know are going to have a lot of mutual friends. So these are going to be, you know, people from high school or um, my husband's friends from high school. People that I know are going to have a lot of mutual friends. And I'll go on their friends list. And anybody who has mutual friends that we have, you know, I would say 10 or more mutual friends, I shoot them a friend request. Um, so if we have a lot of mutual friends, a lot of times they'll accept my friend request because they think, you know, oh, maybe we met somewhere or, you know, they just tend to to accept you when you have mutual friends. Um, so I do that with people. Of course, don't do it with people that are in the business. That's I feel like that should be obvious, but just want to mention that. But this is more people that you're going to be doing it with that are not in the business but are in your network. So... I do that a lot. Um, I do what uh, Barbara talked about on hers the other day. I'll go in groups and I'll um, build relationships with people. And once we have a little bit of a conversation going on, I'll go ahead and shoot my friends a quest. So I do that a lot. But one thing that I do probably the most is we really like to um, get out of the house, Josh and I. We're, we're a full-time family, and so um, we just found for a while we were sitting at home, and we were just tapping on our phones, and we were trying to build our network, and it would be like we'd be tapping on our phones for eight hours a day, and by the end of the day, we were just zombies, and we kind of realized, like, nobody wants to see selfies of you sitting at home all the time. They want to see you out enjoying your freedom. You know, we, we say that we have freedom, friendships, fun, and freedom. So we want to show people that we do have freedom. We're out and about. We're doing fun things. And so we decided that a couple times a week we're going to go out and we're going to meet people. And so different ways that we do this is... Um, you know, we've done things where we've joined like networking groups and different things like that. Those are all great. But where we've actually had the best, um, the best luck is we'll do things like we'll take, um, my girls are in, um, they're in, uh, they're in kindergarten. Sorry, I have a distraction going on over here. The wedding's just getting out. Um, but our um, our girls are in kindergarten, so they're gone during the day, but we still have our little guy at home. And so we'll do things like we'll go to um, a play place and we'll make a point. You know, we have our It Work shirts on, we have our gear on, but we'll just make a point to just talk to other you know, parents that are there and we just have conversations and, um, you know, say, Oh, do you stay at home? What do you do for, you know, conversation, but we always make it all about them. We try to talk very little about us. And I think sometimes the biggest mistake is people feel like, Oh my gosh, I need to get my blitz card in everybody's hands that I talk to. And I think about it a little different. So this is something that I just personally do and it works better for me. But I feel like if I don't have an opportunity to connect with somebody, then like I am i don't really have the opportunity that I'm going to be able to get them on social media or get their phone number because maybe I'm checking out and there's a huge long line or it's just 
that opportunity is not there, then yes, they get a blitz card. Every single person who I don't get that opportunity with gets a blitz card. But I feel like for me, if I have the opportunity to get them on social media or connect with them on, on some sort of platform or um, get their phone number, I'll lead with that first so I can build the relationship and they don't think that I'm just connecting with them because I want to sell them something. And so what I'll do is like, let's say we're at the play place, for example, um, and we're kind of getting ready to leave. I'll just say, hey, oh my gosh, our kids had so much fun together. It's always great to connect with other moms. Are you on Facebook? You should get, let me know next time you're up here. It'd be fun for our kiddos to connect again. Um, so I'll say something like that or same thing. I'm at the beach or whatever it may be. Um, or, um, like we went on a big family road trip this year. And so we were gone for two weeks and my kids, they're just, they're obsessed with dogs. So every time they saw anybody who had a dog, can we go ask, can we go pet the dog? And so we would go and pet the dog. So every single person we talked to, we would just say, Oh, you know, pretty much everybody's on road trips or family trips. Where's your adventure taking you? What are you guys going to do? So anywhere, any place that people were going, I would just say, Oh my gosh, we're super interested in trying that out sometime. Hey, are you on Facebook? I'd love to connect so I can hear what you thought. Um, so I find ways to connect with people on social media and then I start building the relationship and they're going to start seeing what I do with it works. I'm going to get to know them. I'm going to look for opportunities that I can start bringing up it works products or opportunity wise. But I feel like that it's so much more beneficial for me to get them on social media because now we're connected. I have a way to follow up with them and I have the opportunity to build a relationship instead of just slamming the business down their throat. I don't want people to think that I'm just in this to sell them a product or tell them about an opportunity. I want to look for genuine opportunities. So I want to look for the right time that we can talk about products or we can talk about the business or they can, you know, they're going to see my shirt. If they ask me about it, of course, I'm going to tell them a little bit about it works and what I do. Um, but I definitely lead with that. I just think that it's, it's going to be better because they're going to trust me. They're going to get to know me. Um, and we can grow that relationship. So that's really what I do. Um, another thing that I do a lot when I'm out and about to meet people is I look for people. I look for opportunities all day long. And so let's say I'm out and about and I see somebody, I try to be very aware of my surroundings. So let's say I see somebody who has a, like a realtor shirt on, they have a, a, some sort of logo on their shirt or hairstylist or I mean really anything, any sort of business shirt, I'll just, I'll try to make a point to go and talk to them and just be like, Hey, I love your shirt. What do you do? I'm curious about it. Or I love the color. Oh, you're a realtor. Awesome. And I'll say things like, Oh my gosh, we're actually going to be in the market for a house. I think pretty soon. Are you on Facebook? I'd love to connect so we can chit chat when I might need someone or a hairstylist. Oh, I might be in, um, I might be in the market for a new stylist soon. Where do you work? Are you on Facebook? I'd love to connect so I don't forget, you know, different things like that. So I always look for people who I also know are um, going to be looking for networking opportunities because it's such, there, it's such an easy way to get people on, um, on social media in your network and kind of go that way. So I do that a lot too. So I mean the biggest thing and and I'll kind of wrap up with this because I've got I've got so much stuff and I actually this group is so awesome. I just have to say I'm learning so much with this group and it's just been so amazing. I'm so proud of you guys for being a part of this. Um, it's just been incredible. But when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many things. So, um, those are just two things that kind of jumped out at me this morning when I was kind of thinking about it. Um, but you know, I just kind of want to leave you guys with this. You know, I believe that God puts opportunities in our lives every single day to grow your network and to grow this business. But I also think that it's our responsibility to take action. I don't think that there's this like magic thing where all these people are just going to fall into your lap and it's going to be super easy. Anything worthwhile is an uphill battle. It's going to be hard work. You're going to have to grow yourself. It was really hard work to get out of my comfort zone and stop being so shy. And I'm still super shy. It's really hard for me to go talk to people, but I forced myself to do it because I know what I have my hands on. And I know that God is putting people in my life that need this opportunity. And I believe that he's putting people in your life that need this 
opportunity and need these products. And, and you're the one that has to take the action to do something with it. And I'll just tell you guys a quick little story. It's something I've told my team before, but it's just, and some of you may have heard this, but it's, it's so true. So, so there was this, this flood and there's this guy and he is in his house and his house starts to flood and it gets all the way to the top and he's standing on the roof and all of a sudden, oh, I love you guys. Um, he's standing on the roof. And all of a sudden, a log floats by, and there's another guy on another roof, and he says, get the log, save yourself, get on the log. And he says, no, 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 God's going to save me. I don't need the log. I'm going to stay on my roof. God's going to save me. So the water continues to rise, continues to rise. Now it's up to his knees. And a guy comes by on a boat, and he says, get in my boat. I'm here to save you. And the guy says, no, no, I don't need the boat. God's going to save me. God's got my back. I've got this. I don't need the boat. So the boat goes by. Now the water is up to his chin and you know, it's getting pretty scary. And a guy comes by on a helicopter and he sends down a rope and the guy says, no, I don't need it. God's going to save me. I've got this. I've got faith. God's going to save me. He's got my back. And, and then the guy dies because he does, he didn't take those, those opportunities. He dies and he drowned and he gets to heaven and he asked God, God, wh why didn't you save me? I had all this faith. You were going to save me. I knew in my heart you were going to save me. And God says, I tried. I sent you the log. I sent you the boat. And I sent you the helicopter. You didn't take the action to take what I sent you. And so I think about that story all the time because I think that, you know, God sends us different people every day. God sends us different opportunities every day. But at the end of the day, it's us that need to take the action, right? We need to take the action to do something with what he's giving us. So um, I hope that helps. I wanted to really give you guys something that you could implement into your business, something that you could um, work on to maybe help you with your networking or building your confidence. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of meat. Um, I, I definitely could have gotten the motivational route, but I wanted, I wanted to give you guys some meat, um, something that you could actually do to help grow your business. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, um, certainly let me know. I was kind of nervous, so uh, my next one will be better, I promise. But uh, but I hope that helps. Um, I hope you guys have an awesome Saturday. Get those last minute BOGOs and just anything I can do to help you grow your business, reach out. I'm here for you. I believe in you. Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon.